welcome to my clutch replacement DIY tutorial. I'll quickly go over the required plates needed and in which order you need to insert them in. Take note, this is an overview for an OEM clutch pack replacement. If you have an aftermarket clutch pack kit, such as EBC or Barnett's, this video will still help you in the overall process, but the plate setup might be slightly different. If you're uncertain, refer to the aftermarket kit instructions. First up, you'll need one jutter spring washer. One side is flat and the other side is beveled. Next, you'll need one jutter spring, which is concave. And you're going to need one B plate, which is the inner friction plate. You're going to need one A plate, which is the outer friction plate. The A and the B plate will have a color designation somewhere on the tab. My color was green, yours might be red or a different color. You'll also need seven of the friction plates. Finally, you'll need six 2mm steel plates and two 1.6mm steel plates. The sizing is only in reference to the plate's thickness, not the diameter. This is just a visual of how the plates will be inserted from left to right. The jutter spring washer, jutter spring, and steel plates have a specific install orientation, which I'll go over in more detail later in the video. We'll start with installing the jutter spring washer first, then the jutter spring, and then the B plate. After the B plate, we'll be alternating from a two millimeter steel plate to a friction plate until we get to the six friction plate. After the six friction plate, you'll use the 1.6 millimeter steel plates to finish the sequence with the A plate being your last plate. Whether you've purchased an OEM or an aftermarket clutch pack, you'll need to measure the height to ensure a smooth operation. Generally with OEM parts, I believe you should be good to go, with the height being within limits or just slightly higher due to the parts being new. If you have an aftermarket kit and you're out of spec, please refer to the kit's instructions for further details. The illustration shows the standard height and tolerance. So now we just need to heat up the oil by letting the bike run for a few minutes. Afterwards, we'll drop the oil and hopefully this coincides with you needing to do an oil change. If not, you can just reuse the oil you're about to drop. I didn't record the video portion of this for the oil change, but hopefully I'll have the video up soon. In order to get the clutch case off, we're going to need to slacken the clutch cable. You can either do that at the lever at the minor adjustment, or you can do it down below at the major adjustment underneath the case cover. I chose to slacken the cable at the lever, but this will require you to remove the lever in order to get enough slack down below. Generally, most levers can be disassembled the same way. First by loosening the bolt underneath, and then removing the bolt, and then removing the pin. With the lever now removed from the bike, you're able to remove the cable from the lever. This will give you enough slack down below to remove it from its housing. Now that we've removed all the tension in the clutch cable, the swivel arm on the clutch case is able to move a lot more freely. Releasing the clutch cable from the swivel arm housing, it may take a minute. Just use a slight rocking motion and eventually the cable will slide out. Be careful and be patient. You don't want to damage the cable at this point. Take note of the swivel arm resting place. This will be important when you go to reinstall the clutch cable. It needs to be facing toward the engine side of the bike. I forgot to mention you'll need to put an oil pan underneath the bike to catch any residual oil left in the engine. Now we'll loosen and remove the three hex bolts that keep the clutch case cover on. I forgot that the lower bolt on the cover also holds the bracket for the clutch cable. If you're not careful, the cable will pop out once the bolt is removed. Just like this. You're gonna wanna make sure you keep track of your bolts. 
some of the links may differ. So you need to make sure they go back into the same place. And finally, we'll just remove the case cover. Now we're going to loosen and remove the clutch cover bolts. Take note here that this bolt has a copper washer on it. Continue removing the remaining bolts. When you go to remove the clutch cover, be aware that the actuator inside is still attached to the clutch piece. So make sure you move the swivel arm enough so that this disengages the actuator. Remove the case slowly as not to bang on the engine or the frame. With the clutch cover now removed, you can see the actuator inside. In order to keep track of my bolts and to also remember where the bolts go, I made a template from my new gasket. We'll start by breaking loose the bolts on the pressure plate in a star pattern. This will allow us to release the pressure on the plates evenly. We'll continue to loosen and remove the bolts in a star pattern. Now we'll take the pressure plate off and then the A plate is stuck to the pressure plate and we'll take this one off. So after we remove the A plate, we'll come to our first steel plate. The steel plates have a flat side. The flat side will need to go toward the clutch side and they also have a beveled side. The beveled side needs to go toward the engine side when reinstalling. Now we'll just move along and start removing the steel plate and friction plates. If your clutch piece is still in the clutch basket, you can go ahead and remove it now and just set it aside. But as we get closer toward the middle and the end of the stack, it'll become a little bit more difficult to reach. So we'll need a pick or a magnet to help us remove the rest of the items. After the last two millimeter steel plate, we'll have the jutter spring, we'll have the B plate, and then we'll finally have the jetter spring washer. Now that we've gotten all the plates out of the way, this is a good time to check your clutch basket to make sure that there's not any heavy damage or wear where the plates usually sit. Normally the plates sit on the clutch basket and they move back and forth, but over time, you know, and over heavy usage, they'll actually start to cut into the clutch basket. So with your finger, just go through and rub and make sure that there's no like burrs or any any crazy gouging going on and then that way you can continue on but if you do have damage or if it's not repairable then you're going to have to replace the clutch basket now we're going to get ready to remove the gasket from the engine case if you're lucky the gasket will just come off without leaving any sticky residue to the engine case but if you're like me it's going to tear and break and leave a lot of junk around so you're basically going to have to go and get a straight razor and an exacto knife to clean up the edges, uh, scrape off as much of that gasket as you can. Uh, in the process, try not to damage the engine case because it's really soft. So if you cut too far or too deep into it, this will end up causing leaks uh, once you put the gasket back on. Just take your time and make sure that you're not dropping any debris in inside the engine case. So when I was removing the gasket, I noticed that there's two sides to this gasket. There's a side that has some writing and text on it, and there's a side that just has no graphics. The side with the graphics and the writing, uh, when it came out, it was facing toward the engine. I believe that the material is a little softer, maybe even a little sticky, so when it gets uh, tightened up, it like sticks itself to the uh, engine case. Now that we've gotten the gasket off the engine case, we can start to assemble the new clutch pack. But there's a couple of methods of how to soak the plates. Um, some people would state that you only need a few hours to soak the plates and they should be fine for assembly. While others recommend you 
uh, soaking the plates overnight for at least 24 hours or you know a good duration of hours you know you can choose to do either one whatever you feel more comfortable with I chose to soak my plates overnight so basically I separated my plates into two different containers the first container has the jutter spring jutter spring washer a plate and b plate the second larger container has all my friction plates and my steel plates okay we're going to start assembling the clutch pack so we're going to first start off with the jutter washer the jutter washer has a flat side and it has a beveled side the flat side is going to go toward the clutch side and the beveled side is going to go toward the engine side Next up, we're going to have the jutter spring. The concave side goes toward the engine side. So our first plate in will be our B plate. Now we're going to start the sequence with the two millimeter steel plates and the friction plates. As mentioned before, the steel plates have a flat side and they have a beveled side. The beveled side is going to go toward the engine side and the flat side is going to go toward the clutch side. Once you get to your last two millimeter steel plate, we're going to continue on with the 1.6 millimeter steel plate. And finally, we'll come to our last plate, which will be the A plate. Before I install the clutch plate, I'm going to dip the roller bearings and the clutch piece into oil, just so that they're covered before I uh, close everything up. Now that we're ready to put the pressure plate back on, we need to grab our new uh, pressure plate springs and get those soaked in oil. With the roller bearing and the clutch piece installed on the pressure plate, we can now seat this onto the clutch basket. Now we can start to loosely install the springs and the bolts. In a star pattern, I'm going to hand tighten these evenly. Now that I've gotten the bolts as far as they'll go, I'll switch to a wrench and continue the same process. Now that we've tightened all the bolts and springs, the next thing we need to check is the clutch piece. The clutch piece is supposed to be able to rotate in the 360 degree uh, the radius and also be able to be pulled in and out very easily. If for some reason it's not or it's tight or it's binding and it won't pull in and out with ease, this means that you've inadvertently pushed the clutch piece back. And for some reason, if you push it back while you're installing it with the bolts, it, it, it tends to bind. So what you need to do is just make sure that when you're tightening the bolts that you keep an eye on the clutch piece that it hasn't slipped back. Now that we're happy with the free play of our clutch piece, we're going to move on and tighten up the bolts on the pressure plate. Moving in a start pattern, we'll tighten the bolts down to 10 newton meters.
Next, we're gonna move on to uh, replacing the gasket. The gasket didn't have any kind of sealant on it when I removed it, so it doesn't state to put any on, so I'm not going to. But this will probably prove to be a little bit difficult when I start putting the clutch cover on because it's going to have a tendency to slide and be a pain in the ass. To be honest, this is probably going to be the hardest part of the process because in order to get the clutch case cover on, you're going to need to hold the swivel arm and get it past the frame just a little bit because if you go too far, it won't engage into the clutch piece or if you push it too hard, the clutch piece will move back into the, uh, into the basket and then you'll have to take it off, pull the clutch piece out and then start all over again. But you also have to remember that the gasket doesn't have any uh, sealer on it, so it might have a tendency to move too. So you have quite a few things to keep an eye on as you're trying to get this on there. So I would just suggest, you know, give it a couple goes and if it doesn't work out, walk away from it, come back to it. After a few attempts, I finally get it to catch properly. You will know you have it on there correctly when the swivel arm only rotates to a certain point. This is because the actuator will make contact with the clutch piece. Now that we have that done, this would be a good time to inspect the gasket and make sure it's seating properly. Now that I've hand tightened all the bolts in there, I'm just going to go through and slightly snug them even more in a crisscross pattern, just trying to apply even pressure to the case as I tighten the bolts. Using the same crisscross pattern, I'll go through and torque the bolts to 8 newton meters. Now we can put the clutch case cover on and then we can hand tighten the bolts. Now that we've installed the clutch cable bracket back on the bike, we can tighten and torque the bolts for the clutch case cover. Now we can put the clutch cable into the swivel arm housing. Put the clutch cable back into the lever and then reassemble the lever. Once you're done assembling the lever, all that's left to do is put oil back in the bike and put any additional uh, body work that needs to go back on and then you can go out for a test ride. So now you've completed the clutch replacement. Hopefully you found this video uh, insightful and helped you along your way. Please feel free to leave any comments and like the video if you found it helpful.